Hey, what's up? This is Brandon Simmons from BrandonSimmons.biz. This is my weekly video blog called Bullheaded, a review of the Houston Texans news, as well as a preview of the upcoming game matchups. So, this week, the Texans will be on a short week for Thursday Night Football, where they are hosting the Philadelphia Eagles. So, I'm going to get into everything I can about that game. Um, hopefully, this is a quick video uh, for a quick week as well. Um, first, I want to touch on a little bit of Week 8 and what that was all about. Um, so pretty much, um, basically it was just a poor and uninspiring performance. Um, I personally, I thought they had something going in the first quarter. Um, I thought, you know, they're really just kind of challenging this team right now. Um, uh, you know, saying just trading blows, just, a it was going to be a traditional, um, you know, Tennessee Houston rivalry. And, you know, unfortunately, um, that did not go all the way into the second quarter. Um, they did start off with the uh, Steven Nelson interception uh, in the second quarter, but and then they took the 3-0 lead. But after that, um, you know, things just, you know, went away from them. They could not stop the run at all. And, you know, it's Derrick Henry. So you can't really, <laughs> you can't really, you know, blame them for defaulting on that, but at the same time, like, just seeing the uh, the broadcast put up all those stats about, you know, the number of consecutive games that, you know, he's had 200 yards against us and all this other stuff, and, you know, it's just, it's just irritating, to be honest with you, and so I know the fans irritated, you know, the players had to be sick of that, too, um, of just dealing with that, so, um, just bad, just just uninsp just uninspiring um, overall. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, had it. Uh, well, right over here. Um, our run game was stuck, so we couldn't stop the run, and we couldn't get our run game started. Um, Damian Pierce, I think he finished the game like 35 yards. Um, you know, low total compared to like what he was doing previous weeks. So I don't know if this is just him running into a Ricky Wall. Or maybe he's, you know what I'm saying, defense has kind of figured him out a little bit and they just put a little bit more focus on him. And the Titans have, like, the number one defense uh, this week. So, I mean, and obviously we know, obviously we know why. So, <laughs> that's, there's that. Um, but, yeah, uh, just overall, um, just a bad um, performance. It's already has prompted people into talks about tanking and, you know, if it hasn't done so already in the previous weeks, but um, it's definitely started that talk going on now, which is crazy because it's only, what, we're coming up on week nine uh, right now. And, you know, we got a long, long way to go. So there, <laughs> that is what that is. Um, one more thing before I jump into this game plan. Uh, Brandon Cook's trade ordeal. So, uh, you know, it's been uh, as the trade deadline, you know, was approaching, it's been, it was a rumor that, you know, Brandon Cooks might be getting traded, and today, uh, today, um, it was revealed the Texans almost had something on with the Cowboys, but, um, the Cowboys just wasn't willing to take on, uh, Brandon Cooks' contract, and, you know, it makes perfect sense, uh, perfect, um, sense, um, you know, and I'm not a big, you know, contract guy or anything like that at all, I'm still trying to figure out, like, you know, which, which is which sometimes I have to, you know, I have to go back every year and make sure I'm reading up on the definition of it, to be honest with you. But, um, I feel like, you know, maybe not so much the Cowboys. I thought the Packers, um, was somebody that could really take a chance because I mean, from the looks of things, the only person getting paid over there is Aaron Rodgers. And so I know, um, with Devontae Adams, I, I don't know the exact number of how much he was wanting or if they even reported that, but, Damn, if they, you know, maybe it was a little bit more than, you know what I'm saying, 19 mil or whatever. So, um, I figured they could have, you know what I'm saying, got him on a rental basis because, you know, they're in a win down mode right now. And so, um, maybe, who knows if they actually contacted the Texans and maybe the offer just wasn't, um, what they wanted it to be. But, um, definitely, um, uh, with the Cowboys, they, that's out if it wasn't for the Packers, it Cowboys probably would uh, seem like a good fit uh, for Cooks, considering you know there's a wide receiver situation as well. Um, them losing Amari Cooper in the offseason and all that other stuff, but um, you know, 
it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It happens all the time. You know what I'm saying? People just don't want to take on all that money. But um, with that being said, uh, it is kind of shocking that he didn't get moved. And, and it wasn't just the Cowboys and the Packers that are out there. There's other teams that are needing um, wide receivers as well. Um, but, yeah, on a day like today where it was a record number of trades that were being moved on the um, trade deadline day and seemed like everybody was just trying to get something done. Um, yeah, he, I feel like, um, you know, he, he could have, if the money was a little bit, you know, favorable uh, for teams or whatever, he probably would have been moved today more than likely. But, it is what it is. It's going to be interesting to see um, how how this hap- how this um, shapes up going forward. Um, you know, obviously, we, I can't you can't really worry about what's going to happen in the off season because that's like way 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 down the line at this point. So, I mean, maybe as you know, it gets to like a month left in the season, people will start figuring, start pondering things and theories and all that other stuff. So, with that being said. It is time to jump into this game action, man. And so, um, like I said, the um, the Texans are going to be hosting the Philadelphia Eagles for Thursday night football. And Thursday night football itself on uh, on Prime, um, it's 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 been its own little. It's been his own little thing. So it's either it's either been super bad or probably somewhat not so bad this season. Um, and so this is a, this is probably going to be one of those games where a lot of people are going to be giving Amazon Prime a lot of hell for putting <laughs> for putting this on the uh, on their tablets, their phones, their Roku's, all that good stuff. Um, undefeated Philadelphia Eagles coming into town um, to face the um, Houston Texans. And ironically, um, within the same week that the Houston Astros are taking on the um, Philadelphia Phillies, um, I the last time I checked the score in the um, again, in the Astros and Phillies game, it was not looking good for the Astros. So <laughs> I don't know how I'm I'm not sure um, what the new schedule is like since they postponed um, one of the games yesterday, and they're playing that game right now, obviously, but. Um, so yeah, if they happen to play like on that same um, on that same night, it yeah it could be really uh, interesting. So and I'm not sure where they actually are playing it. So, um, but back to this because this ain't a baseball blog. <laughs> um, yeah, this this game can get messy really really fast. Undefeated Philadelphia Eagles um, facing the Houston Texans team that is just they. Yeah, <laughs> that's all you can really do to um, kind of describe this team right now. And so, despite all that, you know, I think there's a there's a slim chance that the Texans can win this game. To be honest with you, like every everybody has a chance to beat any of these teams. Have a chance to beat any of these teams uh, in this league. So, with that being said, I I think there's a couple things that the Texans can do for a win. So first off. They they need to take advantage of the short week. It's you know with cert, you it's happened plenty of times before. Um, you know certain teams they'll you know what I'm saying they'll probably win big on Sunday, uh, but they got a Thursday night game and so depending on like who it is, um, they got a short week and they either show up consistently as they done on from their win or they just come out flat. You know what I'm saying and. It's happened a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these teams, they, you know, they're playing on short weeks. It's a lot of, and if especially if they're traveling. So Philly, they're going to be traveling in this game. Um, so the, you know what I'm saying? On top of that, with that being a short week, with preparation and all the other stuff, um, they're going to have a, a, it might be a little bit rough for them, for them in the beginning. So um, the Texans need to take advantage of that. You know what I'm saying? Take advantage of having the, have two straight home games where you're re- well rested and you don't have to focus on traveling and all this other stuff. You can just focus on the game plan at hand, focus on execution. Um, te- second thing Texans got to do is just punch the Eagles in the mouth. Like, look, man, no- nobody in this world <laughs> is expecting the Texans to win on Thursday night, straight up. You know what I'm saying? Like, this Philly team is just 
too good. They're a very complete team on both sides of the ball. So nobody is, ex it is expecting uh, the Texans to really pull out a W. But the Texans have to take that to heart. They have to take that personally. And they have to come out here and they have to show these they have to show this team that, you know what I'm saying, regardless of what the world thinks, this is what we think. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna play to win this game, you know? And so it's the perfect this is the perfect time to also um just throw out every just be aggressive with all the play calling. I mean, regardless of what the coaches um think of Davis Mill or what or whatever, um, they need to like really, this is when they really need to dial in and just be like, hey, just just let them loose. You know what I'm saying? Um, let them get the ball in the air, all that good stuff. You know, do not be afraid to be aggressive in this game because that Philly's gonna expect us to like just come in, lay down, and they pro their coaches probably you know what I'm saying coach them up not to think that, but you know what I'm saying the players you know when they get out there it's gonna like you if they run into some, <laughs> if they run into uh they're out there on the field and you know players they can kind of tell when you know what I'm saying teams are like out of it or whatever um you know if they step on that field they gotta know that you know the Texans are very much not out of anything you know what I'm saying it's week nine we still got a long season to go so um, just do not, the coaches, Texans coaches have to coach into the players that it's time to be aggressive. Probably the most ag aggressive that, you know what I'm saying, we've been all season. So, you know what I'm saying, you just, just need to go out there and just kind of just really dig in and just, like, really fight out there. Um, another thing that uh, the Texans can um, probably do as well to help them out is probably implement a running back by committee. So, you know, I mentioned earlier about, um, you know, Philly traveling, you know, say having a short week. Um, and, you know, in previous weeks, there's there's been a discussion or just there's been criticism about, you know, just relying on Damian Pierce and then relying on Rex Burkhead, you know. So uh, perhaps maybe not rely so much on Rex Burkhead, but kind of insert a third running back in there. You know what I'm saying? So um, I think it's – I forget. Got his name again. <laughs> I'm not even going to attempt to say it, but it starts with an O. <laughs> and so insert that guy in there. Um, give him a, quite a few more um, carries or whatever. And just do that enough to kind of wear down this um, Philly's uh, running defense. Because they give up, uh, I believe, about five five yards um, per attempt on uh, rushing. So um, definitely um, implement like a running back by committee to just kind of wear this um, – where does Philly uh, run defense down and, you know what I'm saying, just really get the offense going. And so that's that's probably going to be a key thing. If if they can really get that off, that might really be their, like, best chance at winning this game, um, seriously. Because, I mean, with the pass defense, they're tough. Um, I think I mentioned them earlier. Uh, Gardner Johnson and um, Darius Slay. Probably not, probably when I was rehearsing or whatever. But, um, yeah, both of those uh, guys, um, very big on takeaways. Uh, Gardner Johnson with four picks, uh, Slay with three picks. Um, so, yeah, um, that's, that pass defense is going to be tough. But, you know, that run defense is going to be just as good. But we have a rushing attack that, you know what I'm saying, it stumbled a little bit last Sunday, but it can definitely um, find its way back. Uh, it finds its way back to life in this game. So, uh, those are all the things I got for the Texans to do this week, man. Just take advantage of the short week um, and being at home um, for this week. And also, just come out and punch them in the mouth. You know what I'm saying? Just be, do not be afraid to be aggressive. Then They're probably not going to expect much of you, just like the rest of the world is not expecting much of you. Just come out, be aggressive, show this team that you're not scared, and you just might get to win uh, for this week. So, that's all I got for y'all this week. I'm Brandon Simmons from BrandonSimmons.biz. Holla Black.